Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to be talking about type fives today. We're looking at a book by Beatrice Chestnut called The Enneagram Guide to Waking Up. And we're going to look at a little paragraph that she has titled, uh, Five's Tendency to be Excessively Controlling and Self-Controlling. And we're going to unpack this and it's a really good paragraph and I just want to read through it and then just kind of give you some thoughts that come to my mind. Um, I've been able to have a lot of conversations with fives and I don't claim to understand the five mind perfectly, uh, but uh, I can give you an outsider's perspective. I can give you a seven's perspective uh, of what, it, what you might look like to the rest of the world. Okay, an educated guess at least. Before we get started, just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website website tomlehue.com where you can book Enneagram coaching appointments and Enneagram relationship coaching appointments. Um, if I can help you in any way, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to meet you. Um, also, I do have some classes that I offer, some certificate programs. If you're interested in learning more about the Enneagram and how to use it in coaching other people or in directing other people or encouraging or challenging other people, um, I would love for you to go through one of those classes with me. And um, those are all available to you uh, on my website. And also on my website is an events page if you would like to invite me to come speak to your team or your staff. Um, whether that's live in person or via Zoom, I would love to do some training uh, for your team and help them become more productive and more compassionate with themselves uh, and with others. Okay, so let's let's dive into this concept of fives um, being excessively controlling. And boy, I don't think of fives as being control freaks. I can see that you come across as like very self-controlled or self-controlling, but not controlling other people. I don't think she means controlling other people like you might think of a one being a micromanager or an eight, uh, somebody more dominant. But I think of like wanting to be in control of your own space. Does that resonate a little more with you? Hey, I'm a five and I like and appreciate being in control of my own space, my own time, my own energy. I think that makes a lot more sense. So let's just see what she says. You likely take pride in being sensible, <laughs> being sensible. In other words, let's look at the opposite of that. Other people are what, foolish? The rest of us are foolish, foolishness, lots of foolishness going on around you, but you like to see yourself as being sensible and self-contained. Self-contained, that brings ideas to my mind of like, I don't need other people. I'm self-contained. I'm like a bunker to myself, a castle to myself. And I'm sure that you would never say that out loud, that I don't need other people, but that whole concept of being self-contained Sounds like I'm not a part of the village. That's what it sounds like. I'm self-contained. All right, uh, look to see if you have an excessive tendency to exert control over yourself in a way that removes the possibility of fun and spontaneity. What? So how do you feel about fun and spontaneity? It seems to me there are some fives that have very strong lines to seven, and not in a bad way, but they tend to be very fun, you know, spontaneous. Um, goofy, weird, sarcastic, but is uh, how, how do you feel about fun and spontaneity? Does spontaneity bother you? Are you open to new experiences? Are you able to go with the flow? Are you able to move with life? Are you able to be spontaneous? Or do you have a certain level of resistance to spon spontaneity? Do you like to know what's coming next? Um, would you be okay Here's $500 in a van, drive west, have a great five days. Because I think a lot of you fives would be okay with that. I could see where maybe sixes wouldn't or ones wouldn't, but I, I tend to think fives and sevens and nines, we'd be okay. Go west and see what happens. Have a great time. How do you feel about fun and spontaneity? Interesting thought. While you may not typically like to control others, okay, there we go. I don't think fives, in my opinion, come across as controlling of other people, but I think they do want to control their own time. You do want to control your own schedule. You do want to control people's access to you. Now that, 
that I think is five stuff. Like I want to be in control of people's access to me. Like when the bell rings and everybody's supposed to go home, why are you standing around waiting to dominate my time and attention? The bell rang. It's time to move on. I'll see you on Monday. Okay, get a drink of water. All right, while you may not typically like to control others, you may tend to be very controlling in specific ways when others are too close to you. Are you okay with people being close to you? Does that feel good or does it feel anxious when people get close to you? Uh, do you let people in? Do you let people get to know you? And if you struggle with that, at what cost is it to you by having difficulty letting people in underneath that shell, you know, behind the walls? Can people really get to know you? Do they have access to you? Do you have access to yourself? Can you access your own heart in your own feelings, your own emotions. The tendency comes from a need to proactively prevent people from invading your space. How do you feel about your space? Is your space clearly defined? Do you work, uh, you know, attentively and actively to limit the amount of people or time that people have access to your space and your attention? Occupying your time? Does it feel exhausting when people are wasting your time? Are you very sensitive to that? People wasting your time. Are you okay with people wasting your time? Or dominating your attention? Or dominating your energy? Um, consuming your precious energy or messing up your plans. This habit may make life more comfortable and predictable. True. But maybe less intense and certainly less joyful. And you're probably saying, how do you know what brings me joy? It brings me joy to have my, you know, my space respected. Yeah, I get that. I understand that it feels more comfortable, but so much of the good things of life that happen, happen by accident. So many wonderful things that happen, happen as interruptions. You know, lots of great things could happen in your life that happen as interruptions. Are you okay with those interruptions? Are you okay with those invasions of privacy? Or does it disturb you so much that you're not able to necessarily eat the biscuit when it's hot? You're not able to move with life as it comes to you. Okay, let's see what else she says. Uh, this habit may make your life more comfortable and predictable, but less intense and joyful. You may be pushing away the people that you love without fully realizing it. Because other people may not be very good at, um, you know, assessing your ability to connect or whether or not the flag is up for business are you open for business or not and so they want to interact with you on their terms but they're getting a clear message from you that you're not available that you're checked out you're withdrawn and so maybe people move away from you and they would like to connect with you but you're just kind of unavailable to them and you could be missing out on deeper connections with people if you could be open when people need you to be open or when they want you to be open. In other words, if you could comply more with their energy, are you able to comply with other people's energy? And I'm sure you're probably watching this thing, oh my goodness, Tom, I do this all the time. It's so exhausting. It wears me out and you're telling me to do it more? Well, I, I'm not telling you to do anything. I just want you to be aware of the tendencies that you have as a five and when life isn't moving you toward your goals to understand why. If, if life isn't moving you directly toward your goals, you say you want to have great relationships, you say you want to interact well with people, you say you want to have friendships and have a deep romantic relationship, yet if I were to observe you, I might see you withdrawing from the very people that are trying to love you. That's all I'm caring about is just I want to help you reach your goals. And you may not realize why you're not moving toward your goals. And I think books like this and the hundreds of others on the Enneagram are, could be helpful in pointing out those blind spots to you so that you go, oh my goodness, I am such a five. I'm doing it again. I, I want to be connected to these people. I want to be available to these people. I want to make my life open to these people. Yet I want it so much on my own terms that maybe I'm not able to fully engage with people where they are or be present with them the way they want me to be or the way they need me to be. I'm not telling you to change. I'm just saying, what does it look like if you look at it 
through a different lens. Okay. Um, you may be relying unconsciously on living a safe life that transpires mostly in your head. A safe life. Five. A fear type. Five, six, and seven. Fear types. Safe. A safe life. Doesn't that feel kind of gross? It does to me when I hear a safe life. Like, what little kid goes out, you know, playing, pretending to be a hero that lives a safe life? You know, I mean, that's not the way I played as a young boy. I didn't go out, I want to be safe. I want to be a cowboy, but safe. I want to be an astronaut, but a safe one. It was much more reckless, my thinking as a child. You know, much more reckless in my head. My imaginations were me of, you know, a soldier, um, you know, um, a firefighter, a police officer, much more daring and heroic and willing to take risks. Does that describe you? In real life, not in your head, but in real life, are you daring, reckless, heroic? Is there any of that? Because look at that line to eight. Wouldn't you describe eights to some degree as daring, reckless, heroic, willing to take risks, willing to overcome obstacles? And look, you have a direct line to eight when you integrate at your best, you look like an eight. But your desire to keep things sensible and your desire to keep things safe and predictable and not invasive could keep you from ever taking that trajectory to eight and becoming that person that maybe you think of yourself in your imagination. Fascinating, isn't it? All right. Um, but by staying in your comfort zone, Uh, you are missing opportunities to experience more of the richness and depth of life that is available to you. Is your life rich? Is your life deep? I didn't ask if your thinking was deep, because I'm sure that your thought life is extremely deep. I'm sure that your thought life is extremely rich. Is your life rich? Is your life deep? Do you have... Um, balance in your life? Good questions and good things to think about. Uh, as always, guys, be present to life. I'll see you next time.